I think we've been making music now for at least 10, 15 years, so it kind of goes around in cycles. You, you know, in the early days, it was very exciting. You wanted to make music all the time, and then we started to get some success with it, so we had to tour, so, you know, you, you start thinking differently. But I think now, again, I think we're in a period now where it is very much like how we started, where we have um, the excitement about making music is back again. The, the scene is very good and energetic at, at the moment. Everybody is, is, is a, the, the drum and bass community right now is so healthy. Everybody is talking, everybody's exchanging music, talking about uh, the equipment, about the computers, mm -hmm. about you know, the sound of the music now, it's very healthy. So I think right now, it, you know, we just wish we had more time to stay in the studio and explore more techniques, just, just to get familiar with what we're doing again. I think it's changed so much, you know, the equipment and, you know, just, you know, the, just in studio environment now, it's like we need just to be able to be, you know, selfishly, we need to be left alone so that we can just, just do our own thing again and just make music. But you know, we gotta come and promote, come and meet people, explain what we're doing, and that's cool, this is all part of it. We don't mind doing that, you know, we're kind of used to it. But at the same time, it's great to be in the studio. Do you know what I mean? It's great to wake up and know you haven't got to do anything else but make music that day. That, that when, when you wake up and you, that's, your, that's your feeling and your vibe, it's like the other day I phoned Diane, it was, a, it was a good day, it was hot and sunny, and we were like, yeah, man, we have nothing to do but just make music that day. And it was good. We were both excited. Do you know what I mean? Just ironing out little problems we had in the students. And it's, you know, right now it's good. We've got nothing to complain about, man. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's good. It's good. It's a good vibe right now. I started to get involved in music from school and doing uh, school discos and uh, just um, playing music for my friends in a little room, just getting excited about it. And then after that, um, uh, took it to like a youth club and they gave us a room that we could go in and to sort of keep us out of trouble. They gave us a room so we went in there, bit like this, and we sprayed it up graffiti and put like vinyl mat on it, start break dancing and stuff. And you know, it, it was a way for us to kind of focus our energy just to you know stay out of trouble. We went on the streets and it kind of just grew from there really. And then we kind of just took it a bit more seriously, started buying more records, buying more equipment and it just, it just carried on from there, really. Took it to warehouse parties, into clubs. Just, and, you know, DJing at that time really was just a way to, um, just to have, have some meaning, really. You know, have a crew of people, stay off the streets, stay out of trouble, focus your energy on something positive, do you know what I'm saying? Something good. For me, I was just, I lived in Devon, which is like the country. I moved to Bristol when I was about, 12, 13 years old, um, we moved to Bristol. I went to see a film called Beak Street, which is about breakdancing, graffiti, hip hop. And from when I see that film, I walked out of the cinema, a different person. Living on the streets of Bristol, there's always a lot of music, a lot of festivals, a lot of parties, a lot of house parties, a lot of warehouse parties. There's a lot of people involved in music, either DJing, there's a lot of punks in Bristol, there's a lot of reggae crews of Bristol and there was a lot of DJ crews as well and um, we just we used to go to a lot of parties, a lot of free parties out in the middle of nowhere, we'd get out there and stuff and we'd get back to the, the city in the week and stuff and try and relive these dreams that we had at the weekends and try and um, express them through the studio and we'd go in there, that's the one we started making our first music really. Some people listen to Jungle now, and, 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 and for them it's the beginning of an era, beginning of Jungle, but we've been through many different eras, you know what I mean? We've saw the, 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 the beginning of hip-hop, we've seen the beginning of, of rave, we've seen the beginning of Jungle. So for us, we've been very fortunate enough to see a, a lot of the emergence of the music and, be, and to be a part of it as well. So we've, we've come into this with this background and this music, and for us it's like, do you know what I mean? excitement levels, you know what I mean? We want to be, you know what I'm saying? We want to try and in inject that back into the music. And sometimes when we're in these, in these clubs, we see these kids, like, at the front, you know, looking at the records, and it just reminds me of us. That's what we used to be like. We used to be at the front, like that, looking at, like, the Wild Bunch, Mars or Nelly, cutting up two copies of a record and being fascinated. 
you know what I mean? You know that scene where in Wildstar, have you seen Wildstar? You know that film Wildstar? Oh, there's this film Wildstar where Grandmaster Flash, he's, he's cutting up two records in his kitchen. <laughs> right? And it's like, you're fascinated by it. You've never seen this thing. You've heard about scratching, right? But you've never seen it before. And you're watching the scene, you're like, the fuck is he doing? And you're like, you know, you're this 15-year-old kid watching this guy makes two records, and you're like, and it's like, a, it's like culture shock. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like a whole new fucking world. Do you know what I mean? You're learning and watching, and you're like, what's going on? My God, what's going on? It's, do you know what I mean? And that's what these kids are looking like. Do you know what I mean? And, and I know that that's how we was, and that's the vibe, man. Seems a very small place. Like I said, you bump into a lot of people walking around in the streets. Also, you get like a lot of different cultural people who live in the same area, and I have no choice but to integrate um, to mix. So I think it's, it's an interesting melting pot, and it's an interesting combination of people, and um, that's what comes out in the music. The fact that you can go to a club and like they have punks, rasters, b boys, do you know what I mean, b girls, all under the same roof partying. You know, it's not separated. And then you get a mix up, mix up. It's that really, and, and the fact that it is such a small place, it is so far away from everywhere, and your access to certain things kind of limits you in what you have to do, so you become, I think, you, when you get an opportunity, you, you know, you really express yourself and you really use your equipment. I think, I think Bristol kind of, uh, you know, has that history of being self-sufficient as well through, through the parties, through the warehouse parties. And I think that played a big part in the development of the music. People saw a lot of people take it into their own hands. A kind of a co-op kind of situation where you had like a guy over there had a sound system, a guy over there has a DJ, do you know what I mean? And you knew a guy over there who had a house and he wanted a party. So it was kind of like really collective, cooperative type of vibe. And, really friendly, do you know what I mean? Real down-to-earth grassroots type of vibe there, do you know what I mean? So people were like, yeah, I got a house, let's do a party. Oh, I know a guy's got a sound system, great, and, you know, let's... I know a guy who sells some weed and... Do you know what I mean? It's just really close-knit, that type of vibe. I think that comes out in the music as well, where people just... They're just down-to-earth, do you know what I mean? They're really down-to-earth. It's not like... It's definitely not like London, not like up north in Manchester. It's the Bristol's just got its own separate community and I know for a fact that we have travelled a lot of places around the world and there aren't many places like Bristol. There are, there are not that cultural mix where people from all walks of life have to live together and they have to get on and they have to, I wouldn't say tolerate, but they, you know, they do live together in these community and they do respect each other and they do give each other space to breathe and they do respect each other's music and their culture and their background. And then we have a festival, it's called like a carnival once a year and it's coming up. It's the first Saturday of July and it's been going on for as long as I can remember. And what it is is a big street festival and you have loads and loads of different sound systems on it. You have reggae, you know, garage, hip hop, soul, and everyone comes out. It's like everyone shows off. They get, they've been building all year their sound system. And, they, and this one day, they, everybody brings their sound system out and they have your MCs on there, and you've got your little kids all dressed up nice, and this is a big event and everybody's proud, you know what I mean? Everybody comes out and I think that that shows and gives a lot of people the indication that a lot of things, if you take your time, if you, you know, have some, some respect of, of, the, of yourself and the culture, it, it comes out, do you know what I mean? And people can see that. And, and one of the other things as well about Bristol is that you know, you've got people like Smith and Mighty who, who have been one of the leaders in the music for a long time and Massive Attack, Wild Bunch, who have now gone, you know, gone global. They are, they are these guys that just walk around in the streets. So you can go up to them and say, yo, man, I, you know, I dig your music or, you know, how did you do this? How did you do And it's accessible. So kids can come in and they can see that it's not this thing like, you know, it's not like Beverly Hills where you're never going to see Madonna. Or if you do, she's surrounded by 100 bodyguards. So you can't go up to her and even shake her hand and say congratulations, you can't do that. But in Bristol, you can see these guys. You can see any of us walking down the street, any of Mass for Tats, Myth for Mighty, Koshin, uh, Way Out West. You see these guys regular in the street. So you can go up to them and say, okay, how you doing? And do you know what I mean? It feels real. 
And to a 10-year-old kid or a 15-year-old kid who's aspiring to become you know, a, a, a musician, they can go up to them and say, yeah, what's up? And, 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 it's, and it's real. And that has a big trickle-on effect to the, 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 to, to the community in Bristol and the, and the music community. Focus on like trying to fucking sell a million records. Don't focus on, you know, even trying to make a change. Do you know what I mean? Just focus. Have one single idea in your head. Make music. That is it. Do you know what I mean? Don't worry about nothing else. Do you know what I mean? Even, you know, I, I, you know, I know for a fact that when we first started, we were just excited enough just to make make your music. We never thought about putting it out or even selling it. Do you know what I mean? That was like such a far away thing. You know what I mean? We were just like these couple guys, four guys, smoking loads of weed in the studio, just having fun. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think if you, if you have fun, if you love it, that's enough. Do you know what I mean? I think what, what happens is after that, happens after that. Like you said, you never knew about the Bristol thing, so someone introduced you to it. So these guys, do you know what I mean? All they got to do is focus on what they're doing, and you never know what's going to happen. Someone, someone might. They might put one of their tunes on the internet tomorrow, and someone might follow, hey, what's this tune, man? Do you know what I mean? You never know, man. You never, ever know, man. But it's no good thinking about trying to sell a record or start this or do this. Just, just, what, just make music. Have fun. I know for a fact that over the last, for as long as I've been doing interviews, there is this idea about what drum and bass is and, or what it isn't. You know, I'm, I'm for, for sure, it, it isn't this alien thing that, you know, that these obscure guys, you know, like Charlie Mingus or, you know, Miles Davis, you know what I mean, it's not like that. I mean, sure, we get our ideas and, uh, uh, and they sound a bit crazy and way out, but, you know, our background essentially is hip hop, is R&B, is reggae, is punk, is, I mean, all these different influences make up jungle drum and bass. And... Jungle.